It's Beatty. Derek and Andrew Huberman, Derek has in more plates more dates, decided it would be a good idea to make a short on PS enlargement, particularly talking about DHT. So now that is my problem. <laughs> so I'm going to make a video explaining why it is a bad idea, and you guys can stop flooding my inbox about where to find DHT. So for those uninitiated, DHT, otherwise known as dihydrotestosterone, is what causes you to become masculine. So it's going to give you facial hair. It is what's going to give you body hair and cause a maturation of your penis during puberty. So the premise is, is if you take dihydrotestosterone, your penis will get bigger. Then there's a few issues with that. First one is that during your lifespan, different part of your bodies are going to be more sensitive to dihydrotestosterone. So during puberty, your gonads are going to be very sensitive to androgens. And at a certain point, something in your genetic code, whether it be like this is the max amount of proteins that we're making for the penis, and that's somewhere in the genetic code, we're going to downregulate it so we stop producing proteins for the penis. And then it's going to shift into your normal adult um, hormone profile. So if you're a fully developed adult, you will not see any gains from therapeutic doses of DHT, which would typically be 2.5% andractum. So that's off the table. When, furthermore, or rather, now the next idea is what if we treat it as if it was like a steroid for bodybuilding because it is a steroid just a shitty steroid so if we take dht while we do penis enlargement like the exercises such as pumping stretching extending and hanging we would see an increased rate of gain this holds up a little bit however it's a really round about way to go about it because First, you would need a crap ton of DHT compared to baseline to get these tissues to be sensitive. So the amount of DHT in your body during puberty, we're going to probably have to 3 or 4x that to cause any increase in protein synthesis at that time. So if we're just looking at a normal male, an adult male's production, we're looking at 3 to 5 or 3 to 10 milligrams of DHT a week. So on paper, we're going to need to at least 5 to 10x that. Uh, that would be, what, 15 to 15 at the very low end, and then all the way up to 70 milligrams of dihydrotestosterone. That is a lot. Think about what that would do to your hormone um, balance. First of all, that might destroy your hair. It will definitely cause issues with your prostate, and... It could potentially cause issues with your nerves because a DHT, one, antagonizes estrogen. Two, it um, is slightly neurotoxic. So the more you take of it, the more of a neurotoxic effect it will have on your body. Therefore, it can really mess with your brain and then your nerve function. Um, where are we at then? So... It is possible to increase rate of gain for penis enlargement practices with DHT. However, there is some major side effects you need to worry about, not to mention the fact that you are taking a steroid and it will shut down your natural testosterone production. So keep that in mind as well. Now, what are the possible rewards from risking it? We're talking increased rate of gain. However, you still need to put in the work. And on top of that, there is only so fast your body can produce more penile tissue, right? So there is going to be a cap. You're not going to be growing an inch in, what, two months. You would most likely be doubling your rate of gain if lucky. So a typical healthy man on their best months would be gaining one-eighth of an inch in length. If you're lucky, you can probably get a quarter of an inch in length a month with the use of DHT. Now... That might sound great to all of you, but like think about what you're doing to your body. If you waited two months and to get that quarter of an inch, then you didn't have to worry about anything. So 
it really doesn't make sense on a cost perspective. Then there's the argument that people make that, why don't you just take Masteron or Proviron because it's essentially DHT. It is not essentially DHT. They are both altered to be more tissue insensitive to the androgen receptor while being more anabolic, just like any other steroid. So it will not have the same effect as pure DHT. If anything, you want to be taking the most androgenic compounds possible to do this, and I highly recommend against it because they're not very well tested. And because, you know, that's the entire point of them is to avoid androgenic activity to increase uh, muscle mass for cancer patients. That's the entire idea of steroids. Anyway, where am I? So yeah, you can't just take a random steroid that is something like DHT and expect it to work the same way. I can guarantee you it won't. People will say their penis size grew on the compound boldenone or equipose. That's not what is happening. What happens is, is their red blood cell count goes through the roof, causing them to have very strong erections. That is just better erection quality. It is not size. Hate to break it to you all. And then when they come off these two comp, or the, just the one compound, Bowdoin and Equipose are the same thing, their penis goes back to normal state. <sighs> Not to mention their blood pressure. Anyway, <laughs> um, now what are some of the alternatives, potentially speaking? What we're doing with DHT, in theory, is increasing protein synthesis. But it's a really roundabout way when you look at how mechanical penis enlargement works. We are stretching these tissues to the point where they fatigue and then release growth factors to cause proliferation of these cells, making more penile cells. So instead of trying to make the penis grow the way it did beforehand, we need to look at it how it's growing now. And that would mean we need to increase the rate of healing and cell proliferation. Now, I think a bunch of you guys can think of a bunch of peptides that could potentially increase rate of gain. The ones that make the most sense to me are IGF-1, LR3, for among other reasons, and then BPC-157. However, you will still be limited by the fact that the tunica albuginea is connective tissue, therefore it is avascular and it cannot grow nearly as fast as the blood holding tissue. So eventually you will slow down to whatever rate you can produce collagen in in a vascular state. So at a certain point, it won't even be make sense to be doing these compounds because you need to fill or you need to build up more collagen and that's gonna take a lot longer than the blood holding tissue. That's my entire theory. Um, check out the rest of my channel if you wanna know more. So even then you'd probably only have like six to 12 months before you hit a wall with these quick gains and you have to come back to normie land like the rest of us. So, <laughs> yeah, and again, there are issues taking BPC-157. There, It's untested. A lot of people report adhedonia, which is just when your mood is grayed out. You don't feel joy, you don't feel sadness, you feel nothing, and it kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like being depressed, but without the despair. Um, then IGF-1 can cause enlargement of the organs, so palumboism, if you're not careful with it, uh, acromegaly, which is when your bones start growing, uh, is not necessarily as apparent as abuse of HGH, but it's still possible. And then with uh, IGF-1, you can have blood sugar fluctuations. However, if you're smart with it, it's not that big of a deal. So keep that in mind. So basically, if you take anything away from this video and you're going to be dumb anyway and try DHT, please look at BPC-157 and IGF-1 instead for risk mitigation. I don't recommend you take anything, obviously, but I'm young and dumb as well. I've done much dumber things in my past. So try to learn from my mistakes. Don't do the stupid stuff that I have learned from, okay? <laughs> It's not worth it, and it might send you down a path that you can't come back from. So, yeah. DHT is dumb. Just stretch your penis like a normal man. 
and go from there, okay? Um, I have a crap ton of content on r slash getting bigger, my subreddit, and then here on this YouTube channel, Peak Male Physique, where you can see Tubby Me explain penis pumps and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, uh, if you guys know Derek personally, tell him to never mention DHT and penis enlargement again, or I will slap him when I meet him, if I ever do, and I'll go from there. This is BD signing off.